I really like the topic of this TEDx talk. Um, for any journalist, Ikigaya is to see the impact of article or investigative piece of something. And my talk will be about the issues that journalists face uh, in a process of ensuring that impact. So, <clears throat> um, recently in Armenia there has been a tendency to blame journalists for everything. Uh, still, three years ago, a uh, very high-level <laughs> politician blamed us journalists for, for seeing bad things in everything and for creating musty atmosphere. Well, well, very well know, everybody knows that Gach Matnolort. And for what, um, as a result of which, people emigrate from the country. We were even blamed for Armenian national soccer team for their bad performance. And very recently, well-known um, businessman tycoon blamed us journalists or called the journalist a spy and insisted that um, 90% of Armenia's population lives in, live in bad condition because of journalists. Okay, we do have sins, but not that much. We, we do have sins as professional, high-level journalism is something rare today. But I will talk about one of our sins, about the boundary of journalism and uh, activism a topic much discussed in the world, but in Armenian reality, this boundary is transgressed very often, but very often not because of journalists' fault. Um, if journalism meant to be objective, impartial, and fair, yes, in that case, of course, journalists cannot be an activist. Journalists must avoid becoming involved emotionally and especially politically. But let me ask this question, is it always possible to stick to this rule? I assure that even the most professional journalists will say that it is not. Let me be clear, this is not about political involvement, of course. And here the boundary for me is very clear. If you are in politics, it means ultimately that you are not a journalist anymore. Um, but I would like to discuss the issue. Is it justified for journalists to become or to be an activist? Is there an acceptable motivation for journalists to, to do such change of identity? I think there is and there is one. Only and it is related to um, freedom of speech. I believe that, yes, one should be an activist to champion free speech. Let me be, bring just an example. Um, in 2008, March 1, post-election events, when <clears throat> everybody knows what happened, um, when television channels were mostly silent about the situation in the street of Yerevan, Journalists, those journalists working outside of television, outside of um, controlled media, willy-nilly become activists, contrasting their work, contrasting their coverage with official information. And this contrast um, forced them to assume the unintended, unintended role of public defenders. Uh, during those days, the boundary was so huge that it was almost impossible to not to express a position. And being a journalist, providing unbiased coverage was, again, almost impossible. Because, as I said earlier, um, the pressure from the other side, I mean from the state-run 
information flows was so huge that um, fighting for freedom of information, fighting for freedom of speech was an ultimate necessity. And that takes us, many of us, to the other side of the barricade. Um, during those days when uh, state of emergency has been in, had been imposed, it was prohibited to publish any information other than official. So, but in that case, as a journalist, in order to defend public interest, in order to defend their right to get information, we had to find those protesters that were killed, 10 protesters that were killed. So what we do? <clears throat> I personally, uh, for several days, walk up and down the Yerevan street, several districts, in order to find three killed protesters, those that were killed uh, by police by Chirom 7 tear gas grenade, which was supposed not a special weapon, supposed to be a special weapon, not for killing, but it killed. Um, we knew only their names, first name and last name, nothing else. It seemed to be going to be impossible to find them. Um, somehow I, ha I, was a f I was fortunate to do that. I found all 10 protesters' families. I found them, I wrote about them, I published these stories about, their, about them, about more about the situation. I published it in international media. I, had, I couldn't do that in, inside the country. I published it in blogs, in social media. Um, it was not easy because every day I had to go to internet cafe. I had to open new email in order to protect myself, in order to uh, avoid investigation and in order to <clears throat> avoid pressure from the state. Later, I felt obliged to help these families. I felt obliged to find for them lawyers, to find for them even psychologists for their children, for their parents. And here is the question, did I become an activist? I think yes, maybe. Did I have another option? As a journalist, I think I didn't. I had to protect public interest. And in Armenian reality, sometimes journalists have another um, function, solving problems. And sometimes we had to become like activists or social workers even. Maybe this is common for non-democratic countries or for countries with limited democratic values or rights when sometimes journalists become um, life bureau, when community demands not only provide a coverage but also help in solving the problem. And moving forward, I will pose another question. So can we journalists avoid inner call for activism when the facts on the ground are too painful. Um, I, will, I would argue that it, it, will, it is even more difficult for female journalists who mostly um, are more emotional and uh, perceive issues with deeper empathy. And a few words about this. Um, woman, Activism and journalism. This collision becomes even deeper when a uh, female journalist uh, is covering um, women's issues, such as domestic violence. <laughs> I assure that most of the time they become an um, activist. And few words again <coughs> about uh, female journalists. Um, in general, is it... Uh, how, how, what, what does it mean in general to be a woman journalist in Armenia? The superficial answer will be nothing, nothing unusual as uh, the majority of journalists are women. 
um, the majority of journalists, but it's really very important to note that the um, majority of functioning journalists are women, but the most part of the media managers, editors, are men, of course. And this is in, like in other areas in Armenia when um, women are in lower echelons and men are on top. Yes, more and more uh, women are entering journalism, a profession long reserved for men, but is a woman being a journalist as fully embraced by the public or by the society? Deep down, is it, it is not. Uh, just an example, very recently, uh, during this uh, recent elections, I heard a phrase from in, at a polling station from the um, electoral, uh, local electoral commission who was arguing with a journalist and he said, you are lying during it, that's why no one wants to marry you. This is very common stereotype attributed to female journalists. Or several years ago during environmental protest, um, um, one very famous official said to me, you are a nice girl, why did you become a journalist? <laughs> and I have another funny story about this, um, funny and sad story about this. Exactly 10 years ago, I was working on a story about domestic violence. I had to go to a village called Burastan in Ararat province. In that village, domestic violence was an acceptable pattern of life. And while I, so I was working, I was, I, I, while I was doing my field research, I was interviewing people in the, in, in the village, an elderly man came to me, uh, asked the reason of my visit, and when he heard that I'm working on domestic violence, he, he laughed very loudly and asked, are you married? I said, yes. Doesn't your husband ever beat you? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> he, in a surprise, he asked, at all? I said, no, at all, never. And he said, here is the problem. This is the problem. That's why you become a journalist. <laughs> no normal woman, we never, the normal woman will become a journalist. I advise your husband to beat you in a while, once in a while. <laughs> as, as I'm here, as still I'm here, as still a journalist, you can guess that my husband didn't follow this piece of advice. But these words reveals the ideas that exist in society towards journalists, female journalists. But it's really important uh, female journalist involvement because as research uh, reveals that in investigative journalism, in uh, studying um, social and uh, environmental issues in rising problems, women journalists are more consistent, more compassionate and supportive. And this increases the impact of journalism, increases the impact of journalists on decision makers and brings about change. Bring about change, bring change, this is my main message today. And however, here, in bringing change, in trying to have an impact, here we journalists have a problem. And it doesn't matter whether it is high quality, high professional written, undisputed fact-based um, investigative article written by female or male journalist, the I impact is very, very limited. So, this prods sometimes journalists to be more than just writers, to cross the boundary of journalism and involved in raising, further raising of that issue, that, that, this or that issue. 
So this prods journalists to be an activist for impact, for freedom of speech, for freedom of information and expression. I had thought that this is a very typical of uh, this is very typical for mainly for non-democratic countries. But recently I read, um, an art, uh, read an article by a very famous professor in journalistic word, Dan Gilmer, who wrote, uh, I will read it directly, if journalism won't take a stand for call liberties like free expression, and then the leaders in the campaign to save or restore them, we will be fit to call ourselves entertainers and not much else. Hence, I refuse to be called an entertainer and I will continue taking stand when it comes to core values such as fundamental, fundamental human rights and liberties. <laughs> and this is maybe my ikigaya. Thank you.